when it comes to room acoustics, uh, part of the thing we think about is, uh, in addition to the direct sound, is the reflections of sound off the surfaces and the increase in loudness and the coloration those reflections give to the direct sound. In high power audio rooms, however, there's another factor that's involved that has to be always taken into consideration, which is the uh, vibration of the walls. The woofer and the subwoofers are so powerful, they create such huge pressures at such low frequencies that they literally push the walls out and suck them in, and the ceiling up and down, and the floor, if it's not concrete, up and down. And those surfaces are all also shaking and creating sound of their own. So the direct signal is accompanied by a chorus of early reflections and a chorus of vibrating wall sounds. Uh, you can witness all of this by turning your, uh, taking your audio system, turning the volume up, and to a nice, uh, dynamic, active, uh, musical passage. And when you're right in the middle of, of wonderful sound, hit the mute button, the pause button, and immediately, electronically, everything goes to zero. And what you're left with is the sound of shaking walls and ricocheting sound. That sound, it dies out fairly quickly, but it's there and it's really loud. And that sound is the underpinning, it's the pavement over which the rough road, <laughs> over which the musical signal is being transported. It's the noise floor for your signal. It's, the sig it's part of the signal to noise ratio that you're having to deal with. That noise floor masks the signal. A lot of low-level detail is masked by that ongoing noise floor. And when you do good room acoustics, you not only clean up the reflection patterns, but you also uh, dampen down the vibrating surfaces, so you increase the signal-to-noise ratio and get more music.